Close your eyes and imagine. Imagine yourselves in the depths of something dark. You begin to crawl, 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 away from something, away from everything. And your crawling turns into climbing, 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 climbing. You look up and in the flash of an eye, light appears. It's circular and radiant. larger the light gets until you breach the lip into a fourth world, a whole new world, a world not yet developed or tamed, a world whose land is yours to protect, to protect and preserve. This will help guide you towards this goal. It will teach you about the past and how to protect it. We will embark on a journey through time and culture. Ready? Enter the era of the Paleo-Indians. Time is between 10,000 and 500 BC, and you are traveling through the southwest of the United States. You are near a river named the San Juan. Little is known about you at this time. They call you the Paleo-Indians and archaic peoples, but that's not probably what you called yourselves. You are hunters and gatherers looking for mammoths, sloths, camel, and bison. Grab your spear of wood, with a long point made from rock, and throw it. Does it work? Try notching it onto a wooden arm extension known as an atlatl. Now it travels three times as far. Pick yourself some wild onions, rice, grass, and prickly pear. Grind these with your monomatates. Notice that you, not many people are around you in this low density area. You begin to wonder where your home will be. As you begin to wonder this, you realize that you may be able to stay in one place for longer if you cultivate your own food. You are now a basket maker in the years from 500 BC to AD 700. You begin to stay stationary, living in pit houses or homes dug into the earth with plant roofs and sides. You begin to have time to weave intricate baskets, sandals and ropes. Baskets are useful if you apply some sap over them to carry water back to your home home in the ground and under your uh, permeable roof. Could you make your homes better? Quite possibly. So you begin to build. You build small houses out of mud, dirt, rock, and plant, like laying bricks with mortar. You are now a Puebloan in the Pueblo I era between AD 700 and 900. You begin to understand that harvesting your own crop will allow you to stay in a fixed place, so why not make it more established? Small homes sprout out around. More people are around you. As you learn about earthen materials and how they shape, you begin to make your own pottery. Mostly functional pottery for water and storage for the winter months. But now your towns begin to grow. It has grown into a city, a city in the Pueblo II era, from AD 900 to 1150. Homes are coming together to build larger com commune structures. Your buildings are now becoming much more designed. Everyone is liking this idea. More people arrive. But who is that in the distance? They look unfamiliar. They say they are from the south, closer to the sun and closer to the rain. They like your new pottery type that is painted with black on white ink. They are from what we might call Mesoamerica and your trade will continue with them for many more years. Some of your people even take on the name of the revered bird they brought, the parrot. With all these new people, though, you are not sure who is good, who is bad, and who is just distant. You realize that you could be in a better location. The open wasn't working out for you, so now it is time to seclude yourself. This means more safety and shelter. You begin looking at the cliffs for new buildings, as well as the alcoves. Alcoves provide the ultimate shelter from rain, heat, snow, and wind. Why didn't we build here before? Now that you are more established, so too is your culture. It is important now to honor what is sacred in dwelling known as kivas. 
You have built kivas before, but now you can build more of them and incorporate them into your blu building blueprints. One such structure is an alcove known as the River House Ruin along the San Juan River. You have been around in this area before, but you notice an alcove overlooking a flood pen perfect for your crops. And so it begins. You build the most extensive dwelling along this mighty river. You provide 14 rectangular rooms stored at three levels for living and food storage around two kivas. Your kivas look like most. On the inside, they are circular with one hole in the ceiling to represent your journey into this new world. And it also functions as an entrance. Another key point to your building design of River House is the south-facing nature of the alcove. What is so unique about your location is that in the winter months, the sun shines through most of the day, which warms your house. In the summer months, the sun is higher and the top shades the building for most of the day, providing more cool weather. You lived here off and on from AD 700 to 1300. It was not always continuous. While here you relied on the river to help irrigate your crops of corn, beans, and squash. You would also feed on wild plants and game. As the years progressed, you paint and carve mysterious art around this home. This is much like what you have been doing for years. Traveling back to your first few years here on this ground, about 4000 to 500 BC, you etch basic works that are very linear and rectangular. You de depict what appears to be bighorn sheep, deer, and people. You now begin to learn a thing or two and make your works more elaborate. In the years five, between 500 BC and AD 700, your figures are more trapezoidal and life-size. You put up solid handprints and paint large waves or snakes above River House. This era is when you do most of your work. Now back in the later years, you paint smaller figures, sometimes with appendages or heads. We may never know what you were thinking at the time of conception with all your work, nor can we fathom any meaning. We can only derive information from your predecessors who retain much of the culture lost in time. Some of what we see we know to be footprints left by you on your migration travels through this world. And so now you leave River House, just as you have migrated around for quite some time. You travel not too far and not too wide to arrive at the present day. You might look like the Hopis of Northern Arizona or the Zunis of Western New Mexico. They too have buildings that look like what you created at River House and other places. Little is known about why you decided to move on from where you were though. It was probably to find more reliable water for a greater amount of crops. Your people were growing large in numbers. And now you sit and listen. Listen to the music and the stories that describe who you are and who you were. You have left remnants of your past. It is important to keep these relics safe, preserved and guarded. Therefore, it is up to you to educate people about this cultural history. Go back to these places and learn what you can. Teach others this story and lesson as well. Leave these ancient footprints here to stay, remaining changed only by the inevitable degree of erosion. Do not climb, sit on, or lean against any walls. They were once strong, but they are now quite fragile. People like the Museum of Northern Arizona have restored what they could of your home, but the others will not let that happen much if they continue to degrade it. Respect your home. Remember that these are non-renewable resources that will never be replaced once they are gone. Promote the welfare of this place, protect it, and honor your history. Remember when you first arrived in the world and were a hunter and gatherer in the Paleo-Indian time, then a basket maker, then a Puebloan. Remember your homes like River House and your art along this corridor. And remember to preserve and to protect this cultural footprint left in the dust for others to unveil themselves with a little education from you.
Ta-ta! <laughs> 